Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Yue Eats. I'm Yue. Now, we're in New York today to eat at a restaurant that I've wanted to try for a really long time now. This place was really, really all the rage, I would say, uh, you know, uh, several years ago. Uh, you know, the hype has cooled down a little bit now, but it was really the talk of the town for, for a couple years. We're gonna be eating at Gramercy Tavern. Now, foodies all say that Gramercy Tavern is one of the most iconic restaurants in New York. I believe that it's a Michelin-starred restaurant, or at least it had one at one point. During its peak, it was really, really hard to get a reservation there. But, you know, it's a little bit past its, uh, you know, initial hype heyday. I was able to snag a reservation today for lunch. Now, Gramercy Tavern kind of has sort of like two parts of the restaurant. There's the tavern part, and there's the dining hall half, which I presume is the Michelin-starred half. Now, it just seems like this is such an iconic spot that I feel like one video wouldn't do it justice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna eat at the tavern side. I hear that the tavern side supposedly makes one of the best burgers in the whole city. Lots of people rave about the famous Gramercy Tavern burger and say it's one of the best in the whole city, if not the best. So we're gonna put it to the test. We're gonna see if the Gramercy Tavern burger lives up to the hype. And then we're also gonna, you know, review a few other items. Let's check it out. Okay guys, we're seated inside Gramercy Tavern. We're seated in the tavern section. Uh, further back, I don't know if you can see, but further back is the dining room section. And I presume that's the section that's more Michelin starred. As you can see, there's definitely a big contrast. I mean, there's this uh, more casual tavern section and then uh, that dining section is definitely more posh, more white tablecloth and things like that, more upscale service. So it almost seems like a tale of two restaurants. So I don't think it would be fair to, you know, cram too much in the one video. So we're gonna review the tavern side this time. And if you guys like this video, then perhaps we'll return for the dining room side sometime. Although the uh, tavern section is still plenty nice, I think. You know, got me a nice table for one here. Uh, lots of natural light. And you know, just like any tavern, there's a nice uh, bar section here looking really old school. Really like this old school charm here. Uh, you know, more vegetation and flowers and plants. It's definitely a very beautiful and well-decorated space, uh, no matter how you slice it. It feels casual in the tavern section, but also, also upscaled a little bit at the same time. This is the Gramercy Tavern menu, the menu on the tavern side. We will return sometime for the dining hall side if people would like to see it. So these are all wines. These are all their wine selections and um, they actually did also give me a cocktail menu, but uh, you know, they took it away when I said that I don't really drink cocktails, so. And then these are some of their starters. They got some seafood. I hear really good things about this flatbread. I actually really dig a potato and leek soup. If you're not familiar, that's the soup from Ratatouille. The one that, you know, he somehow turned like a tomato based what was probably like a minestrone or something into a potato and leek soup so even though the movie made it seem better than it was i still really dig this kind of soup and then all sorts of other options with like beets and pumpkins and uh, liver mousse and everything else here like the tartare looks a little bit on the fancy end but what else we got here what else is a little bit more standard tavern like grilled cauliflower i dig that sweet potato pappardelle uh, i'm gonna presume that's like a pasta like a pappardelle pasta Our char I'm guessing is a fish. Rick Crest chicken was all the rage at one point. Maybe still is trending a little bit on TikTok. But I hear that the tavern burger is really what you're supposed to get here. It's what really put this place on the map, at least in terms of burger circles. And if you're not hanging in burger circles, then I think it's time to reevaluate your choice of friends. So as tempted as I am to try this duck meatloaf, we're gonna go with the tavern burger and then uh, we'll uh, just figure out a few starters to get, why don't we? So, let's give it a go. Alexis, how are we taking care of you today? All right, sounds good. And we have one offering that's not listed on the menu. We do a soup and sandwich in the tavern weekdays for lunch. So the soup is the potato and leek that is on the menu. The okay. sandwich to accompany it is gonna be loosely inspired by a Chicago style Italian beef. Oh, really? Yeah. Made boogie roll with some melted provolone cheese, little pickled peppers, lemon aioli. It's only $29. Absolute steal. Definitely recommend it. Mm. I will say I would need to know from you if you're interested in doing 
doing that as soon as possible just because I think we've only got two left in the house today. Oh. Yeah. Uh, um, you know what? Next time. Next time. Yeah, this All is right. my first time here, so I'll oh, try no. something more normal. Yeah. All right, cool. I hear the tavern burger is really good. It is. All right. Oh. All right, so. How do you want yours prepared? Uh, medium. Medium, and it comes with bacon and cheese on it. Is that okay? That sounds good to me. I hear good things about the flatbread. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll try that. Okay. And uh, what do you think about the soup, potato and meat? Soup is really good. It's really good? Yeah, I love potato and meat soup, and I think ours is really nice. All right, well, I'll try those two, and whatever I can't finish, I'll take them. Oh, okay, you welcome. You know, I didn't know that the Tavern Burger actually came with bacon, so 35 bucks, it's not cheap, but it comes with a side and, uh, and with bacon, so not as bad as it could be. Oh, excellent, thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Hey, this is looking pretty interesting. Now, I've had potato and leek soup a few times, but I don't think I've ever had one quite like this. This one here is... Oh, this is the flatbread. Thank you. Uh, everything's coming pretty fast, so gotta eat quick. Oh. Oh, excellent. Thank you so much. Did they go over the dips with you? They did not. Okay. Fresh and chive, and chive oil. Okay. This is the green garlic and jalapeno in the center, and then roasted golden beef with Aleppo oil and some sesame seeds. Wow, Aleppo oil, okay. Yeah. And so if you need any more flatbread, just let me know. Thank you. Uh, wow, uh, everything came really fast. I mean, I know this is off peak. I mean, look behind me. Uh, well, there's a. Um, there's some people, but not super full. I mean, there's a ton of empty tables to my left and right still. But despite that, it's not completely empty, so everything's coming really fast. So this is a pretty nice looking potato and leek soup. It's got croutons in it, which is not unusual, but this one's almost studded with croutons in like an artistic way. You know the Michelin guys know what they're doing when they're, you know, adding this swirl, this oil swirl like pattern to really make this food really pleasant to look at. But what I care most about is how does it taste, because let me tell you, I've eaten tons of food that may not look pretty and may not smell pretty either, but it tastes the bomb. Let's break the pattern here. Okay, you know, not too viscous. Liquid yet thick at the same time, and the potatoes look like they're diced really small, so it's not really too chunky of a potato and leek soup, so let's try some of this broth first, why don't we? Mmm, that is outstanding. Let me get a piece with some crouton and some more potato. Really good soup. The croutons, they do taste good. They kind of have like a strong, like herby flavor. Like they really stand out, but but they kind of are really overpowered in flavor and crunch and distract from the rest of the soup. But I love the way that it's a smoother soup and that the potatoes are diced really small and also cooked to like the perfect doneness. Not hard like al dente, not soft like mashed potatoes, like they're gonna melt in your mouth. Pretty good and also the salt level is on point here. To me the croutons are slightly overkill but I really really dig the soup section at least. Mmm. Mmm. Mm, that is outstanding. Now some of this is potato, but I actually think most of it is cabbage. And the cabbage is a great touch. Like it kind of adds like a bit of a crunch to it. Crunchy texture and almost a little bit of like sweetness. Like a more natural sweetness rather than just adding sugar. Mmm. But they actually, uh, they gave me like a, I think she said focaccia. I don't know if that comes with it or if they gifted it to me. I usually use a smartphone, so I feel like usually it's a little bit more discreet, but I guess I was made this time. Let's try this focaccia though and see if indeed this is a good thing to dip in this. First a bite on its own. Mm. It seems like there's a common thread here of the food here kind of having like a herby taste. But yeah, this is great. This is a focaccia, I believe she said, and it has that focaccia texture and fluffiness, but kind of the flavor of like wheat bread. Let's see how it goes with the soup, why don't we?
Oh man. Wow, she was so right. That is like a perfect match. It's like this soup and this bread was made for each other, were made for each other. Grammar, police coming. It tastes very similar to the croutons. I think the croutons were just made exactly from this bread, but when they have a different texture, you know, when they're more soft and pillowy, it goes better with the soup. It absorbs the soup better. Really becomes like an edible sponge. And this crust section, which I didn't eat in my first bite, this crust is just so crunchy and salty, but in a pleasant way, deliciously salty. So sometimes something well-balanced just needs something less balanced, but in an indulgent way to take it over the edge. So a salty crust and a crunchy crust combined with this more balanced broth, delicious. Great recommendation. Mm. That focaccia that the server gave me definitely took this to the next level, I would say. Took it from a good soup to an outstanding soup and bread combination. But now let's try this flatbread, which I heard so much about. And it's still warm to the touch after me reviewing the soup first, you know, where I had no choice but to review one at a time. Love these delicious, you know, charred grill marks on it. You know how I always talk about leopard spotting like on pizza? This kind of reminds me of that. It's like I'm eating like a delicious Neapolitan pizza, but only the crust. And then these are our different dips. But I am just gonna be completely honest, I completely forgot which is which. She explained it, but I forgot it. So we're just gonna have to try them one at a time and just go in blind. A bite on its own. Let's eat this on its own first and see how it is without the spreads. Oh wow. Honestly, it almost doesn't even need the dip. Just eating it on its own is fantastic enough. I said pizza crust earlier, that really was not the right metaphor or simile or whatever. Like just look at the inside, it's more fluffy, more soft. It's more oily too. It's a little bit oily, but it's a pleasant oil. Like it kind of tastes like a, like a nice quality olive oil flavor. The char just adds more of that, you know, delicious charred flavor, charred bits in every bite. The consistency of the dough is just perfect. Like it's stretchy and fluffy. Let me show you. Look, it's like stretchy and fluffy at the same time. Just how stretchy this dough is. And whatever recipe they're using for this flatbread is just amazing. Like it almost has a bit of like a fermented taste. Hmm. But let's try some of the dips that I forgot which was which. All right. Mm. Ooh. Now this one here, I mean, I forget what she said was in it, but this one is kind of like a hummus. Like it tastes very much like a hummus. And with the color and the flavor, uh, I guess I would presume this is like some sort of like carrot hummus or like a beet hummus or something like that. Very, very, very good. Delicious and kind of earthy the way that like a delicious well-made hummus is. My only beef is that I do think it's a little bit on the oily end. Like I wish it were possible for them to, you know, drain some of this oil out of it because I do think that the extra oil is a little bit not necessary, but still very, very good. Mm. All right, thank you. All right, so this is the famous Gramercy Tavern burger. Not the biggest portion, if I do say so myself, but it's the taste that counts. And it does come with some chips. I think these are duck oil chips, although they kind of just look like normal potato chips to me. It was a long wait, but to be honest, I think it's because they were waiting for me to finish the other items. I think they were waiting for me to finish the soup and the appetizer. And that is a really well melted cheese, it looks like. Bacon at first appearance is also looking pretty juicy, but also with some crisp. I believe. Let's see how this guy looks on the inside, why don't we? Okay, I mean that's looking pretty juicy. I mean, look at that, look at that juice. That looks, wow. I don't think I've ever seen a burger that juicy in my entire life. Juicy, deliciously pink, a medium I believe that is not overcooked, perfectly melted cheese. I almost don't want to open and, oh, let's take a quick look. 
Yeah, the bacon, yeah. From this angle, the bacon doesn't look as good, but I'm sure the whole thing will taste good in combination, so. Nothing to it, but. Cheers, guys. Wow, just gonna say right off the bat, this juicy burger is incredible. It lives up to the hype. Wow, I mean, looks are not deceiving in this case. It pretty much tastes just as juicy and, you know, succulent as it looks. The cheese is perfectly melted. Like the reason why people use American cheese often on burgers. Guys, I know this is when people will comment and say, American cheese, gross, but it's definitely the best choice for burgers because of how evenly it melts. In this case though, they're not using American cheese. They found the substitute that's melting just as well. Perhaps Gruyere? Now this is gonna be a nitpick because this is a fantastic burger. I do feel that it could be a little bit saltier. Like, it is a little bit lacking in salt a tiny bit. Just a little bit of salt would take this over the moon. Perhaps they thought that the salty bacon would kind of offset that, but to be honest, just a little bit more salt, and I would say this is up there with the best burgers I've had. Honestly, I've had a ton of great burgers. We've eaten a lot of great burgers on this channel. Al Cheval, Manetta Tavern, Emily Burger, just to name a few. I probably still prefer those places to this place, but this is still very good. The main thing holding this burger back from joining those ranks is that as delicious as this meat blend is, and they have a great one, besides a little bit more salt, there is just like a bit of an indulgent fatty flavor to really give this burger like a wow factor that I think I had in those other burgers that not so much here. And one of the other burgers I mentioned, Manena Tavern, also has dry aged beef as part of their beef blend, which really gives the burger like a unique smoky steak house like flavor. While in this case, the burger is absolutely very good. Probably the fourth best burger I've had. But honestly guys, shoot for the moon and you might land amongst the stars. In a city as full of so many great eats like New York, there are still better places that I prefer. A very, very select few. This was still outstanding. Mm. Mm. In fact, to be honest, I don't think it really needs the bacon. The bacon kind of stands out and kind of overshadows the rest of the great cheese and the great beef, so I'm gonna take the bacon off and see what that does to the burger. Actually, you know what? The slightly undersaltedness is kind of more noticeable. The bacon is salty, so it kind of provided some of that sodium. So without the bacon, it's a little bit more undersalted now. But for me, for this to be an even more excellent burger, I would say lose the bacon and just add more salt. And it's gonna be fantastic. And now let's try these uh, duck fat potato chips. And they just look like normal homemade chips to me, but well, we'll give them a try, why don't we? They're good, don't get me wrong. I mean, if I had bought these at a nice grocery store like Whole Foods or Italy or, or something like that, I would have been really pleased with these. I would have felt like these are a great brand of homemade potato chips. That being said, that's kind of all they taste like. They kind of just taste like a, you know, a nicer brand of potato chips. These are duck fat potato chips, but I don't really taste much different about them, to be honest. Not bad, but I would have preferred just fries. But anyways, guys, we ate a ton of food and everything was more or less pretty good. And thank you guys so much for watching. I've been meaning to try Gramercy Tavern for so long now. Uh, I remember it was all the rage so many years ago. And at the time during its heyday, to be honest, it was out of my budget. I couldn't afford it. I just, you know, really, really dreamed of eating there someday. And I was never able to make it happen. But today, I'm in a different stage of life, more financially secure. 
got the YouTube channel, so finally got to eat at Gramercy Tavern. Like a little mini dream of mine. For the most part, there was not anything I ate today that was not good, I would say. The tavern food alone is excellent, so the bougie Michelin stuff must be great too. Highly recommend this place, Gramercy Tavern. Trust me, you'll enjoy it. And let me know if you think I should come back sometime to film a part two in the dining room. But anyways, guys, I think that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And have you eaten at Gramercy Tavern before? And what are your favorite things to eat there? Let me know in the comments because great minds eat alike. If you like my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. That way you stay up to date whenever I post another video. That's all for now, folks. So until next time, I'll see you later.